Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is the Vulgar Marxist. Tonight, in celebration of Labor Day and in honor of the screaming match I recently got in on Twitter, I am going to be producing a video exploring the concepts expressed in Peter Kropotkin's book, The Conquest of Bread. Now, to me, the concepts here are quite simple, but apparently a number of people have extreme difficulty with them. And therefore, I'm going to expound a little bit on what precisely we're discussing before we begin. As I am certain we all know, the largest sector in the U.S. economy is currently the service sector. Um, shopkeepers, shop clerks, workers at Walmart, grocery stores, etc., etc. People who, while paid for the service they render the capitalist, do not, in point of fact, produce any useful goods. This was not as true in Kropotkin's time, but he had started to notice that the number of shopkeepers and store clerks was increasing and the number of actual productive laborers was decreasing and paused to wonder how little work would be necessary if we simply took every adult and asked them, listen, could you just work in a factory a couple hours a week? His conclusion at the start of the 20th century was that as little as 25 hours a week could completely supply a region or even an entire nation with all of the shelter, all of the food, all of the clothing, and all of the manufactured goods necessary for such if every single person simply agreed to help out. We have industrialized considerably since then, and it is in the interest of updating these statistics that I recently got into a Twitter fight with certain liberals who were absolutely aghast at the idea that they should have to, say, farm a garden instead of working at a movie theater in Hollywood. But that said, there are two ways to calculate this number that I traditionally use. The first one I came up with was to simply look at the living wage. We'll go into what that is in a bit. And then compare it to the GDP per worker, or GDP per hour worked, more specifically. After the argument on Twitter, I decided to go onto the Bureau of Labor Statistics website, and in a whole 15 minutes, got all the data necessary to simply add together the total number of hours worked by every single productive worker in the United States, and then divide it by the total number of people between, in sequence, 18 and 65, 25 and 54, and then there is, wow, this number is really quite incredibly small, 18 to 24. We'll get into why that is again in a little while. But first, I'm going to go through the initial thing I did that is looking at livingwage.mit.edu. So what, I am certain you are asking, is a living wage? A living wage is simply the cost of living in a given area for a given month multiplied by 12. It is the summation of the food, clothing, shelter, transportation, and medical services multiplied by the appropriate taxes involved for a given city or region in the United States. The first thing that becomes glaringly apparent when you do this is that wages are currently staggeringly below the level necessary in the majority of regions for people to live even a subsistence level. Most people simply cannot afford to be anything other than single because they don't earn enough money, much less support any children. So, the second thing that becomes glaringly apparent when you do this is that it would not be particularly difficult for us to have an UBI. In fact, we require less than a quarter of our current GDP. You simply take the living wa median living wage, the living wage of the average region, for a family of three, which is the average household size, multiply it by, I believe, 115,000 households, 115 million households, my apologies, and you end up with a number that is, in fact, entirely reasonable and completely appropriate for a government that gives a single solitary shit about the health and well-being of its citizenry. Which, again, brings immediately to question very large statements by the Democratic Party, and certainly the Republican Party, 
I don't think anyone expected them to actually give a shit about anyone but their own pocketbooks, but the Democrats at least make happy noises. That aside, what I have done here is take the living wage, multiply it by the number of households in the United States, and then divide that number by the GDP per hour worked. I'm going to start captioning at the top center of the screen there the math I'm doing here because I want to make certain you understand it. It requires $60,000 bare minimum to support a household of three people. We have 120 million households in the United States. This gives us a total required cash value of $7.3 trillion. Now, the U.S. produces on average $74 per hour work. You can look this up yourself. So if we divide that $7.23 trillion by $74.33 per hour, we get 98.5 billion hours we need to work. All right. Now, quick aside. If we were to require nuclear families of everyone, this would reduce the number of households from 122 million to 110 million. We're going to keep that in mind possibly for another video, but I just want to say it clearly here. Nuclear families would have an effect, but not a large one. Now, because the figures were so laughably and ridiculously small, I'm going to skip the full employment 18 to 65 figure entirely and go directly to prime working age 25 to 54 workers. If we divide the 98.5 billion hours by the 126 million people between the age of 25 and 54, we get 781 hours per year per worker. Let us assume, for the sake of argumentation, we continue with the standard of two weeks vacation each year, and therefore only 50 weeks per year are actually worked. 781 hours per year divided by 50 weeks is 15.6 hours weekly. Let me repeat that for you. If every single person did productive labor, we could feed, clothe, and house the entirety of our nation at a very reasonable standard of living. $60,000, while minimal in certain urban areas, certainly isn't shabby and is well above what most people currently enjoy. We could feed, clothe, and house the entirety of our population on 15, maybe 16 hours a week's work. Think about that. 15 hours a week and the entirety of our nation is fed, clothed, and housed at a middle-class standard of living. And I had people on Twitter screaming at me that they were an artist who burned three of their paintings this week to make a statement and therefore could not possibly work in a factory two days a week. But, 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 you say, these numbers are derived assuming the existing production of our nation is, okay, cool, fine, 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 fine. I concede all of that. The, the existing monetary value of anything at all is completely wrong. So, let us look at a different metric. There is, at the present time in our nation, approximately 3 million farmers. There have been 3 million farmers in our nation for the past three or four decades. I see no reason that would have changed in the last decade, so I'm going with this number is accurate. I am once again going to start putting captions at the bottom of the screen this time 
so you can keep track with the numbers I'm throwing around. Now, we've already agreed there are 3.2 million farmers. In addition, if we look at July of 2019, I'm not dealing with the effects of COVID on these equations. Too much hypothesis would be involved. If we look at July of 2019, the non-farm productive employee total is 27.5 million. So we have a total workforce in productive labor of 30.7 million workers. But I hear you once more cry. You have forgotten healthcare. You have forgotten teachers. This is entirely true. Allow me to fix that. There is, in the United States at the present time, approximately 20 million workers between healthcare and education. This gives us a total, counting the previous 30 million, of 50.5 million workers for all productive labor, all farming, all education, and all health care. Multiply that number by 40 hours a week and divide it by the 126 million workers between the ages of 25 and 54. Again, we're using prime, only, prime working age only here. We're not asking anyone over the age of 54 to do a minute's work. And we still end up straight back at a 16-hour work week. Two days a week's work. Two days. If everyone helps, we'll produce exactly the same standard of living we're enjoying right now, today. And quite likely, if we actually bother, you know, distributing it more equitably, an improved standard of living for the overwhelming majority of Americans. Now, this isn't taking into consideration anything like climate change, degrowth. We could, as I've already shown, quite easily cut U.S. production in half and still improve the standard of living for the overwhelming majority of Americans. We have a $20 trillion economy. $10 trillion divided by 122 million households is $82,000 a year. I can't imagine anyone complaining about that. And congratulations, we're now down to a one-day work week. And again, I had people screaming and screaming and cursing and swearing on Twitter that they could not possibly work a single day in a factory to support the community around them. Before we close out, there is something I want to bring up. During the end of the Second Iraq War, when the neocons realized they were never going to get enough young people to join the armed forces in order to perpetuate the scale and scope of conflict they wish to have. Several television personalities went running around proposing a national service requirement a la the book Starship Trippers. For those of you not familiar, this would effectively be that every person or anyone who wants to vote is required at the age of 18 to join the military or some other national service organization. And if they fail to do this for a term of years, they are not a citizen, have no rights, and are not permitted to vote in any elected office. For extremely obvious reasons, not the least of which being Blind obedience is not the best indicator of 
an intelligent and self-aware voter, people objected to this. However, in the last few months, possibly a couple of years, it has become quite in vogue among certain classical liberals to speak of the importance of national service in creating character in young people. I couldn't possibly agree more. In fact, I agree wholeheartedly that a term of national service, not military, I add very quickly, of five or six years is entirely reasonable and appropriate, provided it is the last work they ever have to do. And so I am going to bring us very quickly to the 18 to 24 year old labor force in the United States. You will, I hope, remember that all productive labor in the United States, not counting health services and education, totaled 30 million workers. And lo and behold, there are 29 million right here. Now we have at the present time 17 million unoccupied homes in the United States and untold numbers of vacant factories and shopping malls. So I have complete faith and confidence that we can, quite reasonably, reduce the construction labor force by a mere million and achieve exactly the same result we have right now. Six years at 40 hours a week is all that is required to achieve exactly the same level of output the same standard of living as is enjoyed in the United States right now, today. Six years. And again, this is assuming degrowth is a fairy tale. Assuming we do not adopt the system merely to produce a seven trillion dollar ubi. If all we desire is to replicate a basic standard of living for all Americans, two years of work, let's say 20 to 22, for two years, you work 40 hours a week, at the end of which you may do whatever you please, get an education, Get a job in education and health services. Sit on your ass and play video games for the rest of your life. You have done your part and the labor produced will feed the entirety of our nation, clothe the entirety of our nation, house the entirety of our nation in two years of work per person. I am completely certain no one in the classical liberal movement will ever hear this video, and they will certainly not make a response. But I am curious what people like Vouch, Zixi, or Demsock are going to think of this. Again, we can feed, clothe, and house the entirety of our nation if every single able-bodied person works two years of national service, at the end of which they may do whatever they please, even start their own company if they so wish. They're going to have a rough time finding workers because everyone is fed, clothed, and housed, but if they want to give it a try, more power to them. I neither comprehend nor understand the hubris and arrogance it would take to refuse this offer. The level of narcissism and self-aggrandizement an individual would require 
to say I cannot be asked to work two years in service to others. But so be it. Let us grant the classical liberals their starship trooper restrictions. If, for whatever reason, an individual fails or refuses to work a mere two years in a factory, on a farm, in a building project, a warehouse, driving a truck, whatever, if, for whatever motivation, they cannot be asked to do this, then they do not get to vote. I do not see any particular reason why someone unwilling to sacrifice two years out of their entire lifetime to guarantee a basic standard of living to the whole of our society can be relied upon to make responsible decisions about the direction of that society. Again, no one is asking military service here. Make shoes for 40 hours for two years. Plant corn for 40 hours for two years. Make shirts, make socks, bake bread, grow tomatoes, make pesto, whatever you like. I have full confidence there will be innumerable jobs. But for two years, you do work. And again, when your work is done, you are free to do whatever you please. This does not seem in any way unreasonable to me. If anything, it seems like a staggeringly intelligent and foresighted addition to our society. One that would benefit the overwhelming majority of people, guarantee poverty is erased completely, and likely with it any chance of us going into full greenhouse effect Are there any objections here? I am earnestly curious. Please, in the comments or in wherever I post this, what objections do you see to asking every young person to work two years and then do whatever they like? I've already mathematically shown that is all that is required. Heck, we could work six years, and again, that is all that is required. Six years of labor by every individual would produce exactly the same standard of living we enjoy right now today. Two years would guarantee no person in our nation goes hungry ever again. What is your objection? I honestly wish to know.